same thing. Remember, that pain brought us all here. Because remember, only the only people that come out of protest that risk life and limb, that see the world as it is, not as we were told. The only ones who come out, they're the ones who know pain, who know suffering, who know anguish and loneliness. And I'll tell you something, the price of that knowledge, the price of that awakening, that the price of that freedom, it comes at great cost. And there are those of us, many who are behind me, and many of you who know that pain, who have been holding that cost on your own. And I need you to know that I see you, that we see you. This movement has been going on for seven years, and in seven years, and I can promise you this, it's been hell in a lot of ways. There was a time that we were doing this work and there was no support, no infrastructure. It was just us. And we knew, we knew, we knew. Sorry. There's a lot of pain. And we know and we've lost many people in the last seven years. But what we've gained is so much greater than the loss. I'll tell you why. Because what we gained is each other. Do you hear me? Yeah. What we gained is each other. Yeah. And I was having a conversation. Because the question must be asked seven years later. You see, some people in this country and some people in this world inherited wealth. And there are those of us who inherited struggle. Yes. And we've been carrying that struggle. And that was our inheritance. And I was having a conversation with a friend, a scholar, and she's native. And the question that was asked between us was, and the question that we see in a lot of pop culture was, what happens after the revolution? What happens in the apocalypse? And I want to remind you of something. So many of us have been living in the apocalypse already. That our native siblings have been living in a post-apocalyptic world. You see, so many time is not linear. And the experience and realities of different struggle and suffering happens at the exact same time. There are those of us who have been living in a world far different than the world of Beverly Hills. Far different than the world in Hollywood. Not a story that's created for entertainment, but the story of our lives. The ones that we don't get to see. The ones that we don't get to celebrate. And for the first time, many people in this country during this pandemic are having to confront what it has felt like to live a life of inst instability, of precarity, imperiled lives. And so you are here, you the defenders of the dead and the liberators of the living, you the bricklayers and the light bringers. You know the cost. You know the cost. And we fought with our cost. We fought and we continue to fight for those little bits of freedom. Because for the first time in our lives, we are feeling the tensions of our spirits growing and our souls awakening. Because remember, complacency is the death of the soul. And so here we are.
moments of reflection and in celebration, these are the times when those of us who are in the most pain come out. Because they have been denied care, and they've been denied sight, and they've been denied heart. And so our movements come, our movements come. Our movements come and so does the pain. And I want us to not avert our eyes from the pain. I want us to understand and to witness that pain. And to understand that these things coexist. And in the interest of that pain, I want, I want to keep it short and I'll say this. I'll say this to you. Are you with me? Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. I'll say this to you. Sadness is something that we all will know. Suffering, though, is not something that we should have to endure. If we are to suffer, let us suffer because our hearts are expanding with too much joy. If we're going to know pain, let it be the pain of our growth and the pain and the midwifery of a new system and a new way. Do you hear me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So do not avert your eyes in this moment. And do not shrink. And know that in the moments of great reflection comes great pain. And we're going to hold that together. That we exist together. And that that is why these movements exist. Even in the moments of hardship and ugly. Even in the moments of precarity. Because we are inviting. We are inviting those of us who have lived in perilled lives. Do you hear me? Yes! We are inviting that precarity. And so we must not make small that pain or make small ourselves. So again, if we're going to know suffering, let it be of our souls expanding, of our hearts growing, of our movement building. Because that is what you are. And so what I'll say is this. No more allies in this. When we talk about the movement, know that it's you that we're talking about. You're not allies in this. You are the movement. Do you hear me? You are not alongside the movement. You are the movement. We are the movement. We are the people that we've been fighting for. We're going to let go of petty battles and dating moments. We're going to change what movement is. Because remember, it's not just about what you stand for, it's about who you sit with. And it is us. We are the community. I love you all. And I see you all. And it is such a beautiful thing to witness you all. I hope that you see how beautiful you are to us. Bless y'all. Black Lives Matter. We're going to take those creative offerings from our sister now. Please give it up for the beautiful artist who's about to offer with us right now in love and joy and everything. Make some noise!